targeting so-called Islamic State over Ramadi. The RAF's Reaper drones are on the front line in the fight against tracking IS fighters and monitoring their every move over Iraq and Syria. They fly from the Middle East, but they are controlled by two RAF squadrons thousands of miles away. 39 Squadron in Nevada in the United States and 13 Squadron in Lincolnshire here at RAF Waddington. We were given special access and a rare chance to speak to the crews who operate the drones. We are using their first names for security reasons. How real does it feel knowing that you are here at RAF Waddington? Uh, I think when you're in the bubble it's as if you're flying over the area that you're actually uh, operating over. Um, obviously you step out the box every couple of hours for a, for a sh short relief but as soon as you get back in your professionalism turns back on and you do the job. So there are three ground control stations here at RAF Waddington but the crews refer to them as being in the box. Most of what is in there is highly classified. What are some of the, the challenges if you are watching people for a couple of weeks and you sort of feel that there's almost that connection to them that there wouldn't be if you're a fast jet pilot sent on one mission to, to one area? Uh, it is part of the job. We're trained to do it. Um, we are uh, well um, coached in the issues that that can raise uh, and so it's uh, all part of what we do. Has it ever affected you? Not at all. 99% of the time we're primarily focused on intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. If it's a requirement at the end of months of watching someone uh, to take a shot, for example, you've, you've done all of those months' work leading up to that for, for a reason, ultimately. This is often seen as an unmanned system, but it's anything but that. Uh, we have men and women operating this aircraft, whether it's as pilots, sensor operator, or mission intelligence coordinators, in the cockpit and a number of people outside. So there is a number of human beings, intelligent people, who are making the decisions ultimately whether we're going to use a weapon effect or not. I think we have saved many hundreds of lives in, in what we've been doing. Um, we have provided um, deliberate effects to the coalition on the ground and that is a, a enemy that ultimately had, had a threat to the UK. Um, and I'm very proud of the squadron that they've delivered that effect over the last few years. 13 Squadron have been awarded with an Operational Service Medal, recognising the part they've played in Operation Shader over Iraq and Syria. It is the first time they have been recognised. It's fantastic news. It's something that we've been battling for a number of years for. Uh, and to uh, get a, a ribbon and a piece of metal on your chest, people will do an awful lot for that. Uh, and I'm absolutely over the moon that our squadron are going to be recognised in this way. I think there has been some... Um bad press in the past about drone flying and things like that. Some of the films that have been out on the media have not been the best, but uh, I think now everybody can see that the, uh, the achievements that we've made and the difference that we've made in the areas that we operate in uh, are huge and it makes a big difference to uh, our safety back home. It's, it's a high pressure job um, and it can be a very hard to get a good work-life balance, I suppose. So, so to have that recognition, I think it's, it's pretty important. The Reaper Force remains one of the most guarded and secretive military communities in the world. They're hoping that talking about how they operate will create greater awareness outside of the military community.